Hey everybody, it's Lauren with Leatherati.com and uh, I'm privileged to be here tonight with Kit Onyx, Mr. Leatherman of Color 2013. How are you? Of course, everything froze up just now. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Everything good there? Yeah. You know what? Let's start over because it actually, uh, the whole video froze up and everything. Okay. All right. Let's try it again. Here we go. Hey, everybody. It's Lauren with Leatherati.com, and I'm happy to be here tonight with Kid Onyx, Mr. Leatherman of Color 2013. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm great. Thanks for taking the time to uh, sit down with us for a few minutes. Anytime. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. So people that don't know, tell us about the, uh, the Leatherman of Color contest. Um, Leatherman of Color contest is a contest that was... Uh, it's been reinvented a few times, a few names, but uh, this one seems like it's here to stay. Um, it's it's more of to give people a different insight of what's going on in the leather community, to let everybody know that there is diversity. Um, a lot of people have different myths and perceptions of what the leather community is. And this is just the title to let them know that um, there are leather men of color that are interested and that are kinky and that are wild that aren't afraid to show themselves <laughs> and put themselves out there. Now, is this the uh, is this the only title uh, specifically for men of color? Yes. Wow, that's pretty impressive. How did you how did you get uh, how did you decide to do this? Um. <laughs> well, this was actually my second year running. Um, last year was, uh, I want to say I was pretty new to the whole leather scene. So everybody was still getting to know me and, uh, meet me. So the second time around was a success. So I've always been, uh, the wild child. <laughs> <laughs> I always feel like that. So I've always been the one to experiment and step outside the box. So, uh, this was kind of up my alley and I'm not afraid to be who I am and, not let anybody hold me back or hold me down. That's good. That's good to hear. So many title holders have to like try to be that PC and have to be all careful about what they do and how they talk to people and stuff. It's good to see somebody that's just having fun with it. Yes, yes. You are still having fun, aren't you? Yes. Okay. Very much so. You have to cool. be yourself with the, the title. <laughs> <laughs> now, does this title uh, feed into IML or MAL or one of the one of the other one of the other contests? It feeds into IML. Okay, um, good. But, but I did attend MEO and I was able to meet a lot of the classmates that will be running for IMO also. So it's a it's a really good opportunity to meet new people and new experiences. <laughs> That's cool. So you'll be you'll be IMO this year. Yes, I will. I will be running. That's great. It's the thirty fifth anniversary, you know. Yeah, it's very exciting. Very exciting. It's very exciting. It's excellent. Good. So is Rod getting you all uh, up to speed on all the questions they're going to ask and stuff? Yes, him and I have some other uh, people that are willing to help me and come forward and try to uh, just make sure that I present the title very well, right. present my support. Now you mentioned that uh, one of the things that this title does is help people understand that there are leather men of color out there who are, who are kinky and having fun in leather and stuff. Is uh, I mean, why why is it hard for some black men to come, you know, for some men of color to come to the kinky scene? Um. In my experience, I'm still very young, but um, it's, it seems as though a lot of men of color or black men have a hard time with expressing who they are, period, let alone to actually give into something that isn't normal, uh, saying that people are into water sports or this thing or something out of the ordinary, out of the box. So right. uh, it's, it, it, it's hard. Yeah. It, it's hard. Because you're looked at a certain way, and you have to be the same type of person, and you have to... It, it's, it's very very stereotypical of the community. Um, and I think mean, this breaks it. This completely breaks anything that anybody ever to, to ever tried to put you in. Well, it is really funny. I mean, when you look around any leather gathering, and you see very few men of color out there. It's... Uh, it's very it's true, I mean, of any color, so it's funny. Very few, very yeah. I'm, I'm kind of hoping that uh, in the coming years, 
then 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 after one other thing would take the perception perception right um if at that my time I was very open with who I am in the left man and um I, I get a lot of positive feedback some negative here and there but a lot of people you know they're afraid to come forward and they don't see that many people that look like them or yeah. close to them in the community so I think this kind of really helps hope that you know. How do you how do you deal with with the negative feedback? Um, I don't. I would actually say I don't think it's negative per se. Everyone has their own perception and their own thoughts, so everybody's entitled to them and everybody's entitled to their opinion. Um, I actually welcome people to tell me exactly how they feel because it just gives me a different perspective on on how to go about educating people. Mm. and open it up so that way the community isn't very closed-minded as you know the as it has seemed to be so far that's a really good point because so many people are, are scared to open their mouths around any issues like that they're scared they're going to say something wrong or they're going to you know do something like that so it's good to, it's good to see that you're, that, you're, that you're not afraid to go there right so let's let's talk about some fun stuff what was the what was the most fun part about your contest um, <laughs> I think, I think after the contest was the most fun part. Yeah. Um, because I'm, I'm not, I guess, I get a lot, of, when I see people, they, they always, uh, especially men of color, they always tell me that they're excited to see me in the love of the community, but they can also see me in the urban world also. Right. So they see me on the street and they may see me out at a bar or a club or something and then they don't, don't expect me. They expect me to be, you know, this leather man and this mean person and I don't speak to anybody and I tie everybody up and beat everybody with <laughs> whips and chains and that's, that's not me <laughs> at all. <laughs> so it's, that's, that's, that's been the best part so far is that I'm, I'm breaking a stereotype that everybody has for the leather community. That's cool. That's cool. Was there anything that was scary about the contest for you? Um, the questions. <laughs> yeah, did they ask you something you weren't expecting? Um, you you just never know what to expect at all. Never. So um, I'm I try to keep myself open, but it, every once in a while I get that one thing that just throws me to like feel. So <laughs> it's a can little you, hard. Did, can, can you share one? Can you share a question with us? The three for the three for loop. Um, I think. Well, I think the past. In the past, I I did porn before, so that was one of the things that they kind of came at me with, and how would I be able to represent the title and still, you know, have that in my past. No. What, what was your answer? Um, it to me, porn is art. The body is art. So anything that's natural is art to me. So I don't see it as the dirty, undermining, you know, back in the woods thing that everybody sees it as. I don't see it as that. I love the human body, no matter whose it is, and I love when people are free with it, sexual and non-sexual. So that kind of gets me out there with that one. <laughs> That's cool. You know, it's funny because years ago when IML was first starting out, uh, I would venture to say that over half the guys were, were actually porn stars back in those days. So it's kind of funny. We changed our tune. <laughs> yeah. Got to be a little bit more political with it. <laughs> yeah, that is true. What would you tell somebody that was thinking about writing for a contest? What, what advice would you give them? Um... My advice would be to study, study the community, learn the community, um, actually be out in the community and meet different people. Don't afraid, don't be afraid to put yourself out. Is what I would say, because you have to, you have to always be open and you have to see. You never know who's going to be there to have your back or to help you along the way. True. So you have to, you very much have to be open. Yeah. Has there been something really, really surprising that's happened to you along those lines about people, people getting your back? Um, yes, very much. Um, <laughs> MAL, I, um, I got 
I got an email from a very unexpected person that I never would ever to expect to get an email from, and he was supporting me, and he just let me know that if I ever needed anything, you know, his door was always open and I could come to him, and, you know, any way he could help, he would definitely try to help me out. That's cool. Especially when you get it from the unexpected places. Yes, very, very <laughs> unexpected, because um, he's old guard, and I'm more considered new guard, so right. it, it it's kind of... It, it makes me feel a lot better about running, and it makes me a little bit more gung ho about going for the title and actually trying to place. <laughs> yeah. Now, when, when did when did you get when did you get did you uh, get get your title? In October. October. Yes. And so you went to you went to MAL. What else have you been doing since then? Um, I'm actually trying to work with um, an organization. It's called Fierce. They're a new organization that are ran by all young um, young men of color. And they try to support the community. They do HIV testing. They do counseling. They have a um, they have a lot going on for them for them. But they're new, and they don't have that much funding. So um, I'm trying to see if I can work with them to not also give funding, but for people to notice them and right. understand that you know we may be young, but we're out here and we're trying for you know our future because we have to because we are the ones that are about to run the world sooner or later. That's cool. That leads to my next question. If you were running the world right now, what's one thing you would change? Um, clothes would be against the law. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody would have to be me. What See, about? Saves you a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Even in the winter time. Well, you can have a coat. Okay. <laughs> have, that's about it. Nothing under the coat, though. No. That's Nothing a pretty good answer. That, that that would simplify everything, wouldn't it? Very much so. <laughs> What's been something surprising that you've uh, that you've run across in getting ready for uh, for IML? Um, I think a lot of the history, a lot I I knew was very deep. Um, being a part, being a member of Onyx, we were able to during our pledge class we study a lot of the history of the leather community. But now I'm going deeper. I'm delving much deeper into it. And I'm, I'm learning a lot. And I didn't know that it was so intense and extensive and the work that some of the people had put in before us that oh, yeah. got us to this point that we're at, you know. It's funny when we always but, discover that we didn't invent the shit. Somebody else did it before us. It's always funny to discover that. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, how long, how, Onyx has been around for quite a while, hasn't it? Yes. And there's a number of chapters involved with Onyx, too, isn't there? Yes, they are. And you, now, which chapter do you belong to? I'm in Northeast New York. Okay, all right. Yeah, because it's, it's a really active organization. Yes, and becoming more. We, uh, we have New York, we have D.C., we have Atlanta, we have Chicago, and we're also trying to start a chapter in San Francisco. That's so we're, we're coming along. That's coming that's along very nicely. Very cool. They start one, they start one in, in, in Southern California, so you, so you have a chance to come out here and visit. Yes, I, I, that, that's another thing. I get to travel <laughs> and meet a lot of different people as I go along. So are, you, awesome. are, you, are, are you getting a chance to travel quite a bit? Yes, I am. <laughs> that's cool. Am. So, okay, so now let's, let's fast forward for a minute to IML. Okay. So you, you're, you're at IML. You win IML. What's, uh, what's your agenda for the next year? Oh, wow. Um... I think my agenda would be, honestly, I don't, I, I, I don't know at this point, because I'm so focused on just trying to get to IML, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you know, and I don't, I, my, my goal is, I don't want to say my goal is not to win IML, my goal is to be noticed. I would rather for people to notice me and notice that um, there are, that us younger ones are trying to get out there and make a change and we're trying to get in the community. We're trying to do something good. So that's what my goal is at this point. No. Have Winning you, would just be a plus. <laughs> true. Have you ran across any uh, any age bias in the community? Oh, wow. Yes. Um, everybody seems to think I'm younger than I really am. Um, that's the problem, number one. I guess most people think I'm like 21 or 22, and I'll be 30 this year. So 
everybody's always like, oh, oh no, you don't know this much, or you know, you're so young, and what have you really experienced? And a lot of things I've <laughs> experienced that I've been around, so it kind of, it, it, kinda, it makes me feel good that people think I'm young, but then again, I'm like, yeah, I'm not that young. <laughs> it's because it's you smile a lot, that's what it is. <laughs> so they, when they find out you're not you're not, not not that young, do they do their attitudes change a little bit? And they figure well, maybe maybe this guy's got some stuff going on or something like that. Um, I'm not gonna say their attitudes change, but I guess their perception opens up a little bit more. Like, hey, maybe you know, we can give him a chance. Because <laughs> I know that's that's a, that's really like that. That's a problem that a lot of younger guys have, and women too, for that matter. Like the, the older guys and older women don't take them seriously. They're like, oh, yeah, yeah, once you pay your dues, once you've been around a while, then we'll listen to you. You know, right now you just need to sit back and be quiet and let us tell you how it's going to be done, you know. Right. Because, like, we did such a good job with it, right? Because we... <laughs> we, we, paved the way. we paved the way, but, you know, we, we have to finish. We have yeah. To keep it it's true. Anything else you want to talk about? Anything I didn't ask you that you thought I was going to ask? Um, I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So what are you what are you doing to get ready for IML? Um, I'm actually uh, reach I reached out to a few title holders, and they uh, they actually helped me at IML, and they're gonna kind of guide me along the way. I mean, sorry, they helped me at MAL, and they're mm-hmm. gonna guide me along the way for IML. Um, of course, studying my history, trying to make sure that I have it all together. Um trying to travel a little bit more so I can meet other people and people can meet me also. So um, it's a lot to do in a short, short amount of time. A lot to do. What do you think the most important, uh, what's the most important quality for a title holder to have? Um, I think the most important quality for a title holder to have would be to be, to be open. You, you can't really be a leader of any community without being open-minded and being able to listen and to take to absorb everything you don't have to agree with everything but you should never judge against anyone else and i think that's uh a lot of the problems that people have that's not in our community our community doesn't have that as much but a lot of people who hold offices or titles very judgmental and they're very close-minded so i think just staying open completely open as much as possible I think that's great advice. If everybody would do that, we'd be a lot better off, I think. A whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so be open and no clothes. Yeah, yes, there you go. <laughs> open with no clothes. Yeah, open, no open. clothes. Yeah, that sounds pretty much it. You know, it'd be, yeah. hard, it'd be hard to be really dishonest and, and not very open if you weren't were wearing any clothes, isn't it? Um, I think it's very hard to do that. I, I don't think people would really be paying attention to what you were saying if you were... <laughs> I think that would be problem number one. <laughs> That's problem number one. True, but it, it but it's hard to be uh, it's hard to be dishonest and be an asshole when you don't have any clothes on. Yeah, kind of. You kind of leaves you open. Leaves you yeah. Nick, Takes your defenses you down. <laughs> I like that. We should we should put that in for IML instead of having the jockstrap session. We should have the naked segment. Yeah, it, it leaves you completely open. <laughs> we'll I'll, I'll vote for that. <laughs> All right, Kid Onyx, thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Anytime. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And I'll be at IML, and I'll be looking for you. Great. I can't wait to meet you. All right, same here. I'll talk to you later. All right, thank you. Bye.